Hey guys, what's up? Chris Rod, Sunset Lawn Care, coming at you with another video. Listen, today we're going to be getting a little bit more extensive on how we are going to lower the pH in my Bermuda lawn, okay? Um, primarily, we're going to be focusing on ammonium sulfate, elemental sulfur, okay? This is what our local stores got, sulfur at the 90%, and we're going to be applying some citric acid, you guys stay tuned. All right, guys, so what did we just see happen here? I'm gonna look at all those white spots. <laughs> Get white and yellow, right? That is going to be, ooh, that's abundance right there. Let's break that up a little bit. That's gonna be the elemental sulfur at 90%. And then we've got the little white specks, which is the ammonium sulfate fertilizer that we're using this year, okay? Now, this is my first time ever doing this kind of aggressive application to decrease my lower pH, okay? And I've gotten it, the idea primarily from the Long Guardian and um, Matt Martin over at the Grass Factor, okay? This is a very aggressive approach, and all we're simply doing is bringing our pH level down to what Bermuda likes to be at, which is that between that, you know, six to seven range, six and a half is ideal. Um, the last soil test that we did here, which I did a video on how to reduce your pH levels on a very homeowner type level, very low um, uh, elemental sulfur product level. But the, the approach that I'm taking for the next few months, again, is an idea that I got from the Long Guardian. Okay, He did a video where he interviewed Matt Martin in regards to the use of ammonium sulfate, your elemental sulfur and citric acid, okay? Now the technical side of that, I could explain it to you, but it's not gonna be a great explanation to the point that Matt Martin can do it with the grass factor. If you guys want detailed information on how this, you know, these products work in decreasing your lower and lowering your pH, you need to go check out his channel, okay? Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do a case study on this on how effective it really is to apply that uh, combination and that aggressive approach to a, you know an established lawn I, I really don't have issues you know it, it's green it's healthy you know we we apply organic material I, I i spoon feed it i don't get crazy with my applications but I've, I've been adamant this particular season in regards to dropping my pH uh, levels, not only in my lawn, but in my garden beds as well, okay guys? Because, you know, I've got tomatoes growing, various types of tomatoes. We've got the, the leafy greens, we've got the, the garlic, we've got the onions, but I haven't been able to successfully grow tomatoes in abundance. And when I tested our soil this year, what I discovered was that it's, you know, that seven and a half range, okay? Not only for the lawn, but for the garden as well. And, you know, as you know, hopefully, maybe you don't, but as I know, tomatoes in particular, they like soil types more on the acidic side, okay? So I'm working with a very alkaline soil, and I just like to, you know, buffer that out a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and get that approach in, that very aggressive approach. You will not see me do this anywhere else other than my own lawn because my lawn is our test trial lawn. And as you guys can see, you know, it, it's 
pretty green. It's healthy, like I said earlier. The organic material is there, uh, but I'm gonna be doing future videos on some more of that organic applications. But, you know, video, another one for the week. Lowering that pH on an aggressive level, does it work? What did you guys try to lower your pH? Are you guys on the store-bought, the big box store elemental sulfur that I previously used on a video earlier this year? Or are you guys applying some aggressive approach, citric acid, ammonium sulfate, and elemental sulfur at the high doses, okay? So as far as the application rates go, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, is the elemental sulfur, I know, we never apply more than five pounds per 1,000 square feet per application or per season, okay? From all the university studies I've read, 10 pounds would be the max, okay? But that's really pushing it. That would be aggressive. So today, I've only applied four pounds, okay, of elemental sulfur, 90% elemental sulfur, okay? Um, the last application I did was an 18% elemental sulfur, and I did a six-pound bag, okay? And this was about a month ago. Let me double check that, but I think it was about a month ago. It should have been about a month ago. So I'm gonna do 30 day increments. I'm gonna stay regiment with this and uh, routine. We're gonna go 30 day applications uh, on the elemental sulfur. I'm gonna keep applying this. And again, guys, don't do this unless you're absolutely 100% comfortable with it, okay? And you got a sprinkler system and you're able to water and do those kind of corrections if you see trouble spots. Because essentially what we're doing with the elemental sulfur is we're doing soil corrections. We're taking care of the soil, right? Now with the citric acid, what I will tell you and what I do know is that that citric, that citric acid, essentially the application, all we're doing is essentially we're taking care of the soil some more. We're breaking up some bonds. Um, the calcium carbonates and the magnesium carbonates, okay, once that citric acid is applied, it's going to have an effect on it, and it's going to start to leach down those carbonates down through the soil system, which is going to start moving the needle, <laughs> Matt, moving the needle on some of those, um, the, uh, uh, the calcium and the magnesium, okay, and, and start moving the needle and lowering that pH, which is essentially what we want to do. And then the ammonium sulfate, totally new fertilizer for me, guys. Um, you know, I, I have not used this before. It's nothing new to me. I mean, I know exactly what it is. I know what it's going to do. It's got a 21 uh, nitrogen, zero phosphorus, zero potassium. So, you know, we're, we're missing those two elements out of the, um, the NPK rate, which I'm fine with, uh, primarily on the phosphorus side, you know, I already know due to my soil test that my phosphorus is crazy high. So I don't need to apply any more, any more phosphorus. I haven't done so in two years. So I've stayed away from any fertilizers with a phosphorus product. Okay. But the potassium, okay. Uh, potassium is is what's going to strengthen that grass blade up okay and that leaf tissue it's going to give it that that strength it needs to survive our summer heat you know here in el paso in the desert environment but uh, the the mere fact that that 21 that nitrogen percentage it's a little bit high for me that's not something i normally apply usually i'm on the lower spectrum of that um around the 16 or the 8 range okay depending on the uh, fertilizer i'm using so when I am going to be making these applications with the 2100, you best believe that it's going to be on the lower side of the spectrum. Okay, so typically when we're doing these applications, we're applying anywhere from a half a pound to three quarter pounds of nitrogen per application. And typically I do almost seven applications per season. So with uh, this particular season, the product that I even use for my own clients, I'm not even going to be using in my backyard because I know my soil test, right? Um, so I've elected to go ahead and do a test study, a trial study back here on an aggressive approach to lower our pH, utilizing not just the citric acid or the elemental sulfur, but we're changing up our fertilizer product as well. We're going to be using the Helena 2100 ammonium sulfate on a lower scale. That's going to be a point I'm going to do uh, today. I did two and a half pounds. So that's going to give me 0.52 it's going to be right about half a pound, I think, 
Don't quote me on my math, don't make fun of me, but 0.52, it's about a half pound of uh, nitrogen application. And then uh, 30 day applications every four weeks, I'm gonna repeat this process again in the efforts of lowering my pH levels inside of our soil and our garden um, on an aggressive approach. Now, with that being said, the only thing that I'm not applying to the garden, uh, I'm not doing uh, the 2100 the fertilizer okay uh i went ahead and put a little bit of the elemental sulfur in there and when i say a little bit i got about 100 square feet of garden so it's like a pound if that of the elemental sulfur and the citric acid uh as well okay and then lastly the, the the final thing what i'll wrap up in regards to the garden is i'm really not trying to i'm trying not to fertilize or use any fertilizers on the garden because i try to maintain as organic as possible so with that being said um i've got some new videos coming up on some of the products we're going to be using for the garden that is not a fertilizer but is going to incorporate organic material into the garden to keep that mycorrhiza uh, fungi going in so we get that root system uh, established and promote growth throughout uh, each one of our different various plants that we have inside of the garden guys so again you know this is an aggressive approach on the lower end of the ph it's a lot different and there are a lot more steps involved in regards to lowering the ph uh from the last video i did so this isn't a recommended approach okay you really have to get a soil test done to know your ph levels okay before you take the steps of purchasing elemental sulfur uh the grade i have or the citric acid or even utilizing a fertilizer that you know nothing about okay because there's urea fertilizer there's ammonium sulfate so you really should know what you're doing which one to use and what kinds of application and the pounds on the ground per thousand or per square footage that you're actually working with okay i happen to know this information um so i can comfortably say what i'm doing it's going to have a positive effect on reducing my pH, okay? But I'm going to monitor it. I'm able to monitor it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this isn't a client's property, okay? And I can see what's transpiring as the days go by, whether I need to reduce watering, increase watering. We're dealing with sandy soil systems here in El Paso. So I'm not trying to push a lot of water to leach all this product down because those carbonates from the calcium or the magnesium after applying that citric acid, they're gonna push down eventually, and I don't need to have this happen on a rapid level. Next year or in the fall, I'm gonna take another soil test. My goal is to transition from that seven and a half to a six and a half. How fast that's gonna happen is the study I'm conducting now. So if you guys have any questions, leave me a comment below, whether it be through um, you know, any of my application rates today, or if you wanna see me do another test trial, let me know, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like. You guys have a good one, bye.